Sound effects in this podcast is brought to you by Festly and Studios, BattleBars.com, and Pro Sound. And some of them are made by the Dungeon Master himself. This show is R rated, so everybody be advised. Hello, nerds! Welcome back to Nordic DD, the Ariana Saga, your Dungeons and Dragons homebrew podcast created here in Copenhagen, Denmark. This is episode 19. Yeah, I know sometimes I am a little bit too calm as I talk. It seems a little bit more boring. I, I, I know, and if you don't like that, I'm sorry. But sometimes when I listen to other YouTubers, it just stresses me out. And then, ah, 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 and then wow, what's going on? Ah. I'm sorry. I can't do that. That's not me. That's not my style. Of course, I will try to be a little bit more upbeat, so it doesn't become too boring. Like this. Today we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons. No, 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 no. Let's find it somewhere in the middle, guys. Let's find it somewhere in the middle. Anyway, before we continue, let's take a stop at Camp Lore. Was that too fast? Maybe. So the barren lands of Midmorrow are, are filled with dangers and are walled in, Grandfather. How is Westmorrow? Well, Westmorrow has always been the more peaceful side of Morrow. The desert of Desert Stone is a desolate place. Nothing lived there. Nothing can survive there from the mere heat of the place. Ages ago, there once has been some people living there. There are temples, but it is uninhabited now. The climate has changed so much that no one can live there. And as for the swamps of Isris, well, all the dangers are contained in the swamps itself and does not affect the rest of Westmorrow, luckily. Rumor has it, though, that the Inquisition hides in the swamps, willing to risk the dangers to not be revealed to the public, so he can still hide from the king. But one thing is sure, they venture also into the rest of Westmorrow. But the king has stations in Morrowtown West policing the west side and guarding the Great Wall leading into the Midmorrow. They keep most of the Inquisitions at bay. But this leaves the people of Westmorrow sometimes in conflict with which is the lesser evil. The king's men who come to tax the people of resources and gold, or the bitter inquisitors who hunt down the dragonborn, which are not many of anymore and who kill all magic users. <laughs> it's funny to me that you say Westmorrow is the more peaceful site, but the people have a, a swamp which is filled with danger, a desert place which no one can live in, and the king's men who robs or taxes them, an inquisition who kills anyone who uses magic. Boy, there is nowhere on Morrow a place with total peace. But compared to Midmorrow and Eastmorrow, where the king has all his focus and he rules with an iron fist, this is the more peaceful place to be. And if one wants to be the safest in all of Morrow, one should try to find the hidden place of the safe haven called Bliss. All are welcome there, with good intentions at heart. Bliss? I thought that was a myth. Many do believe it's a myth. That is why it is safe, hidden away. So yeah guys, this was this episode's Camp Lore. Now we're going to continue with the main event. Hunter, played by Marshtin Rajan and Kettle, played by Bastian. Merkenberg are on their way to the Great Wall leading into the Barren Lands. Tawagrim heard reports of the general Leonard Breeden of Warway is the one standing there hitting the wall trying to break in. This makes no sense to Tawagrim, this makes no sense to Hunter or Kedal or anyone else. Why is the general doing this? If the wall is to come down, the evil within the Barren Lands is going to cover the entire West Morrow and kill everything. Even the fact that only one general is trying to break this massive wall is strange enough in itself. There's so much mystery around this that we know not what is going on. 
Now we're gonna find out what the heroes see when they get to the wall leading into the Barrenlands of Midmorrow. <laughs> Okay guys, so you're flying high, it's windy out because of the height of the area where you are, so it's hard to hear anything except the wind blowing your ear, but you still hear the faint dashing of a loud hammer in the distance, and it's getting louder as you fly closer. And then you, Hunter, when you are about 200 feet away, you hear the banging of the hammer, and you have this familiar feeling. Okay. There's a strange sensation coming over you as you get closer as well. Okay, well, fantastic. Well, uh, the sensation of presence, as you call it, is the same feeling when you have had conversations with your Patreon. Oh. So, yeah, it's like your bow is vibrating and you feel like a presence is close to you. Familiar. Okay. Well, I guess if you couldn't get me to do it. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, we need to put a uh, yell across. We need to put him down. He's controlled. Probably by a. <laughs> uh, did you hear that? We're right next to each other. You don't have. There's a lot of wind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I get it. So, so I think I'm gonna put it. I put the griffins down, like, good distance. You know, like, I don't know, have they noticed us? No, it doesn't seem like they have noticed you. As far as you can see, they're standing perfectly still. How far would you be from them before you land? Well, let's well, see. Where can we... At what point can we see him? And at that point when we see him, does he see us? That's probably the best. Yeah. And also, how, how big does he look? I mean, in comparison to the other men. Well, as explained to you, that he looks more bulkier than he did before, but he has also a large armor on him. But he's not large or huge. He is normal size, but just like uh, Leonard Breeden on major steroids. Okay. All right. Okay, I would estimate you about a hundred feet away from the wall. Now you can see now the area is very open, but there are a lot of trees. You see uh, the great high wall and you see uh, and hear the banging of the hammer even louder where there is this man standing at the far end of your eyesight but there are some soldiers standing in front of him as well uh, just quick when you land do you quickly hide uh, is there any point in hiding well we should at least hide the, the griffins because yeah, if they die we can't so get up we land in the trees and kind of you know, hide the griffin, tie them or whatever. Yeah. Do we need to make some sort of check to do that? Uh, yeah, make a stealth check to hide away the griffins. First roll. Woo! 14. 10. Okay, as soon as you land your griffins, Hunter is quick to jump off, tie um, uh, the rope of the griffin to a tree and get him out of the way and Hide them. Uh, Kettle, when you come down, um, you land not so smoothly and the griffin kind of shrieks. Um, not too loud, luckily, but you are also able to hide him away and uh, tuck him into a tree, tying him, um, him uh, tightly up. And because of the distance from where you are and the wall, the hundred feet that are between you, the loud sound from the weather and the wind does not reach them, so it seems like nobody noticed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. stuffy. And of course after maybe the bird it makes a noise, if you hear those, if you look straight where uh, the, the, at the wall you see that the men standing in front of the general are standing completely still, uh, and uh, the general is still hammering away on the wall, so seems clear. Okay. okay. Should we... Get to it? I, I don't think it would be a good idea to. Oh, how can we, should we talk? Well, you want to talk? Go ahead. You think uh, he's, he looks to, uh, talkative? Go ahead. Knock yourself out. You I, look, I think I think of the two of the pair of us, you are the most charismatic of us. Oh. So I think you should use that side of you. I'm, I'm just saying I, I don't think there's any point in talking to him because he's obviously not in his right mind. Full disclosure, I believe in being 
be somewhat controlled by uh, a demon devil. Yeah. Um, that because <coughs> well, uh, quick. We don't have much time. Quick re recap. I will tell you. My patron, the guy who gives me this power, tried to get me to break in to Mid Morrow. And Why I said, wanted you to do that? he wanted me to release all the monsters in there. I said no. And I believe that since I said no, he found someone else to do it for him. I kind of feel a little bit of a presence here. Yeah, just to, uh, to resonate with your, with, with your vision there, I. Uh, I I meditated and had a had a dream where I also got warned about a potential deadly future with the smell of sulfur. Mm -hmm. And if he's a demon, that would add up. Yeah. We should not talk. We no. should just attack. Yeah. Can we can we see how the battlefield is aligned? Yeah. Roll a perception check. I will do that. That's only going to be a 19. <laughs> only a 19. <laughs> yeah, we will. You're standing about 80 feet away from the general who's standing, still facing the wall, hammering at the wall. Uh, in front of the general, about uh, 65, 70 feet away from, me, from you, you see the soldiers standing perfectly still in a wee form. Like when you see ducks flying in order when they go uh, south or north, um, in that shape, like one soldier in front, then two, and then going outwards. But uh, the strange thing in orders also is that each one of the six soldiers, there's six in number, and uh, no, no, not six, seven, sorry, you notice that they're holding the halflings in front of them and they have a blade or a knife pointed at their neck, standing perfectly still. Just waiting. Yeah, it seems like they're standing perfectly still, looking straight ahead, almost like statues. How much space is there between them? Uh, give or take f uh, 10 feet between each soldier. Between each one? Yeah. How old are the halflings? Uh, they seem to vary in age. Okay. I can only... Uh, I, have a, I have a chance of saving two of them, but, um, but that's about it. Okay, I can't How many was there? Seven soldiers with seven halflings. Oh, no, 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 no. You said ten feet, right? Yes, I did. Ten feet between them. Damn it! So, okay. Um, yes. We can try and control as many as we can. Uh, but, of course, there's a risk of it failing and... And there's some dead halflings. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want to try. If you want to try and talk to them, they don't look like people you can talk to. But are you willing to risk some halflings? Because I'm fine with it. I would like to do everything I can to rescue these halflings. And um, but I don't know what their intention is. Maybe they'll just cut their throats. Right when they see us, and yeah, it's exactly. a part of a ritual because they stand in some, and stand in a specific pattern. Yeah. So I don't know. Do I know if this pattern has any religious context? Well, you can roll a uh, or magic context if if they are trying to summon anything by doing this. Well, that, that is actually two different roles. Do you do you, do you want to know if there's a re religious reason for this or a magical reason for this? Because there will be a difference in in a role in the check if it's going to be a religious check or an arcane check. Yeah. So if you wanna wanna find out if there's a magical reason, then roll an arcane check. Can I use guidance? Yeah, sure. You're standing in a distance. There's time for you to cast guidance on yourself before you're making this investigation. Twenty-two. Uh, yeah, you know for a fact that this is something you've never seen before uh, in a magical nature. You don't know what this. Damn. Should we? Uh, should we we, we do don't it? have time to talk. No. So let's just get it over with. Let's go. We need to go. We need to go closer. Yeah. So, um, you go first. Uh, you do what you can, and as many as you can, and I'll take the left over. I need to be within ninety feet. Yeah. So, so I need to place it there and close. Yeah. So after scouting the area, you go back to the hundred feet away that you were earlier, back to Hunter, and tell them all these things that you have. Uh, seen uh, Kettle and then 
You make it ready for your attack and plan your moves. 90 feet from there is... Let's try and uh, let's try and sneak us closer. Yeah. Excellent. Roll our stealth check, guys. Use guidance again, because we're... Yeah, you may, of course. You are planning ahead. You're not in the middle of battle. You have time to cast guidance on yourself before you make the roll. Please. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's an 8 for Hunter. It's a 12. Okay. Yeah, okay. <coughs> you are sneaking. You're going closer to uh, where the soldiers are standing. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it seems like the rain stops and becomes absolutely silent. And right at that point, you step on uh, the ground where there's no, not so much grass, but a lot of um, dry twigs, and they snap. And you make a sound. And then you hear the hammering of the wall stopping. And where are we at when we've tried to sneak forward? How long before they stop? I will estimate you have gotten half movement uh, close to the soldiers before they start. Yeah, that's the 15, that makes sense. Stealth is also half. Yeah. And then at that point you see uh, <coughs> Hunter especially notices that the general lowers his hammer uh, behind the soldiers. He turns around and at that point as you see him facing you, Hunter, the vibration of your bow becomes more intense and the presence of your Patreon intensifies. Mm. So it seems like you and the general are locking eye, Hunter, and the kettle, uh, you look at the soldiers holding the halflings, and as you move closer, you see the blades of uh, the soldiers getting closer to the necks of the halflings, and roll initiative, guys. Uh, 16. Oh, 17. Yes. And Kedal? Minus 19. 19. Yes. That means it will be your turn first, Kittle. I do. Are they looking like they're, uh, if are they're they, about to slit their throat? Yeah, if they oh, sort of yeah, it sure looks like it. But you notice also that the soldiers are standing completely still. Their eyes are locked in thin air. It's like they're in some kind of trance or something. And the only guy looking at you is the general. Then I would like to walk forward and yeah. try, to, try to commune with him, talk. I'll just slowly walk close until we yeah. see some sort of... Aggression, and then I'll, I'll d definitely if I, if I come close enough and I see any form of aggression, I would like to cast a spell. So and I would like, to, yeah, exactly. I would like to as soon as I'm close. Uh, enough. Okay, let's just say that this is pre-initiative uh, right now, uh, until you see any aggression, like you just said. And if, as you get closer, um, the soldiers seem to be closing in with their blades to the necks of the halflings. Can I ask a question? Because you said, because we went, we were here before they noticed us, and then we got to walk closer. Yeah. How close are we now before initiative starts? Because it's quite relevant. Well, yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, but you did fail the stealth check, and I said that you would get half movement close until they notice you, and there is where the initiative order will begin. So you are now about 50 feet away from the first soldier uh, standing with halflings. Okay, I would like to walk forward here. Five. And how much, how much would you say I can speak before it's an action for me to speak? Well, that is a good question. Just go ahead and I will say when initiative starts or when it will cost you an action. I will stop you before. I'll, I'll take my hands up like this. And then I, uh, I walk forward, and I, I uh, no, I take one of my hand up like this, and the other hand I don't pull anything up, but I hold it near my component pouch, and I just tell him, I say out loud, before any aggression happens, let's, let's, let's just let's talk about this. Don't release the halflings, and I, uh, I just slowly walk forward here. 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, I'll just stay there. And I'll hold Entangled Spell until I see any form of aggression up here. I won't cast it, but I'll hold it. Okay, nice. Um, anyway, none of the soldiers seem to respond to you at all. They're just staring in and in, in, out to the air still. And But the general starts to speak with you and say says... Say the I do. <laughs> And you see him making a gesture with his hand, and he says to the soldiers in front of him. And I would say that that is the sign of aggression that you were looking for. I cast Entangle. 
and I cast it right there. So it should be these four guys need to make a strength save. Nice, cool. Let's go. The big guy and the these four. I will roll for General Leonard Breeden first. Yep, and it's DC 16. Ah, shit, he only rolls a 14. Oh, he doesn't make it. Awesome. Then he's, uh, I, I take out of my component pouch, it takes these uh, small vines and I, I whisper a couple of words in my hand while holding them and I just let them go and they move like snakes um, at, the, at the ground and it starts to burrow and right at this point uh, between the the four um, of the guys who are behind, they sprout in a much bigger form from the ground, from the ground and, uh, and they have multiplied while on the ground as well. So a lot of vines just sprout out and try to grab them, and the big guy is, is grabbed by vines and pulled toward the ground. Nice, love the description. Cool uh, kettle, and then also these four soldiers also have to make the checks that leaves these two other ones out uh, from your area of effect, so they are not entangled. But first, I have to roll for uh, the other four. Oh, that guy also does it. If it's here, it's five. That's five. That's the same square. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So you, oh, that's nice. You tangle all five of them. Uh, best that, that remains uh, the two of them. There were seven total. Who are not entangled, but let's just roll the, uh, the checks. Hi. <laughs> okay. Okay, this plastic dice is going to my DM jail. They're shit. They all fail. <sighs> Excellent, uh, successful uh, spell with the tangle. Five of uh, the general men are entangled as their halflings are standing in front of them and the general himself also entangled, just leaving the two soldiers. So the, the vines pull them down to the ground. They are pulled back and in case they are not prone. So they're st just standing up, but the vines are trying to pull them at the ground. So they are sort of resisting and they can still make attack rolls and stuff like that, but it's harder for them because they're, they're sort of there are resistance in them moving, so they are restrained, they can't move, and they have disadvantage on all the attack rolls. Cool. But of course the halflings also have to make a check to see if they get restrained, right? Well, yeah, they should make a save as well, the halflings, because they are also getting hit. Yeah. <laughs> because I can't, no, no, I can't exactly. sculpt myself. No, I can't. Like of course not. Um, and I'm making just a group check for them, and I roll a 10 only. Then they also get a pulled back just like them but in any case it'll be harder for them to hit anybody that everyone is standing like this oh, okay yeah. like you said uh, you explained that all the vines go into the ground moving like uh, snakes or serpents and they grow out of the ground they grab the soldiers and the halflings and tighten them up so actually the knife and the blades are tucked away from the halflings and they are pulled down to the ground and the general as well. The guys who succeed, they'll just sort of dash and cut the vines over. But the, the area here is difficult to rain for anyone, even though they succeed. Noted. Cool. Very nice. Okay. Um, there is one of uh, the soldiers' turn before your turn, Hunter. And now this is very important because there are two of them not entangled. And I want to make a decision of who is the general, who is the soldiers, who is going to take the turn. And to determine that, I'm going to roll a dice, it's going to be a 50-50% dice. Uh, if it's a 10, it is, uh, I will choose the number of the soldiers from the north side. If it's higher than 10, it's going to be from the south side. So it's going to be 50-50 chance that it is one of the soldiers who is not entangled or one who is entangled before it's your turn, Hunter. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. So, it's 12. So you start from that side. Yeah, so it's gonna be one of the entangled soldiers' turn. So we have to make a strength check to get out of these wines. Yeah, if, but he, he's gonna use his action to do that. So he can't he can't stab the half thing as well. Mm, exactly. Nice. And that's a 21. Nice. These dice are better. And a lot heavier, <laughs> you could totally hear it when I uh, roll them. Mm, but yeah, uh, 21. Then he gets free. He pulls out of the vines. 
or cuts them over. Yeah, so he managed to cut off the wine <clears throat> and just looks at the halfling in front of him, but he has no more actions in this turn. So before he can do anything, he has to wait until next turn, and then it is your turn, Hunter. Yes, so I will run forward. But I can only kill one. Then we have the front guy was the problem, you know? Yeah. This is hard. It is. <sighs> so annoying. Ten more feet. <laughs> Ten, yeah. Uh, I don't have anything else. I guess. <sighs> uh, we'll try and kill them. That's our best bet. Yeah. That's, that's the only way I can get both of them. Exactly. Excellent. Go for it. Yeah, so I'm gonna put Hex on that back guy. And I'm gonna try and shoot him with Sharpshooter. Uh, that's only a third, uh, 12, but I'll use Favored by the Gods. Nice. Nice. That would nice, do nice, it. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oi. So that would make it a 19. <laughs> Very nice. That hits. Um, that's uh, 9. 24 damage. Ouch. 24 damage. <clears throat> Nice. Is he still standing? Unfortunately, he is. Damn it! Oh, man. I'll kill him. Yeah, I'll shoot him again then. Uh, 24. Hits. Uh, 19. Well, yeah, that hits. So, uh, Hunter, you are running uh, towards this uh, soldier holding the halfling trying your best to catch him before he slits the throat of the halflings to cast a spell, but you can determine by the distance of the blade to the neck you won't be able to cast a spell, so you cast Hex instead, take a bow, shoot him, and it hits him right in uh, the top corner of his shoulder, and so you're hoping that was enough for him to go down, but he, he lands back on his feet and goes back up, and you, in the blink of an eye, shoot a metal arrow right in the head and he falls down <coughs> this all happens so fast in a bit of a second yeah uh, there's still one guy well did what we could because he was out of range yeah. from my spells yeah exactly cool it's good to have a backup at least yeah well, what we'll but we still got one that first guy still is not controlled by anything sadly no. but what can we do yeah are you finished with your turn? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my turn. Okay, then it is this soldier, the next guy who was catched in the vines. He tries to break three and rolls uh, 18. He, uh, he makes it. Cool, so he rips his way out of the vines and his first reaction is to go for the halfling in front of him, but he has to wait his next turn before he can grapple him again or do anything about it. And then it's this guy in the back. He will also try to get out of his vines as well. And he rolled a 19. He gets free? He goes. At least they have to use their turns to get free. Yeah. That's... Then it's this guy in the front. <clears throat> and I, I believe he was not... Restraint? He's not anything restrained, not anything, so he just stands with Okay, he uses an action, uh, takes his blade while looking straight ahead the entire time, not even looking down at the halfling, and slits the throat of a male uh, young halfling, killing him and throwing him to the ground. No! Yeah, a very dramatic sight to see. Mm -hmm. And then this guy in the front on the left side. Oh, by the way, um... Yeah. He's restrained, but these two halflings are not. So they could actually, if they had turn, use their turn to move this way if they wanted. He's restrained. They aren't. These two. Didn't all the halflings fail? Yeah, but they 
they are not in the range of the oh, spell. Oh, they're not so in the range. That, that, no, that guy, he just died because yeah, he, he, he got his slip. Those two guys are restrained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true, true, true. Uh, sadly, just one of the halfling who was not uh, restrained by the vines just died. And uh, the second one, out of this reach of the vines, has fled and dashed 50 feet away from the soldier who has his turn now, who is in fact restrained. Uh, you notice one thing with your passive perception that as soon as the halfling has run away, this is the first time that you see their head move the soldier and it focuses straight on the halfling who ran away and he, he tries to break off the vine and he rolls a 21 to break through. Then he's free! So he also rips his way through the, the vines and you see his hand stretching out of the halfling who just dashed away and he starts running at him. Now I know that the terrain right here was rough terrain, but unfortunately the rough terrain ends right at his feet so he steps out of the rough terrain and makes full movement 30 feet close to the halfling who just ran 50 feet away. So he's getting close to him. And that will be the end of his turn. You got that guy, right? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Then I'll, I'll try and I have a I have a trick up my sleeve. I think it'll it'll maybe work out. Then it is General Leonard Breeden's turn. Okay, cool. As of now, all the soldiers have ripped apart their vines and are free. You have only one casualty. One halfling is dead, and then it is the general's turn, who also have broken off his vines. He walks towards you, Hunter, and points at you and says, "You, I know, I know you." you. Now our souls are intertwined by your Patreon who you fail to serve. Now I have his favorite one. I know you intimately. And I point back with my middle finger. I know you too. <laughs> cool. Anyway, he walks closer to you and you take you see him take out his arm, then a spirit form of a bow appears in his hand. Identical to yours, made of the horn of your Patreon Iraq. He pulls the string back, casts you in the head, and shoots you with sharpshooter. And gets a 17 to hit. Yeah. And he rolls damage. Seven. Uh, that's a 17 piercing damage from the general. Ow. Ow. Yeah, and he takes another shot. Yeah. Minus the fur. This is only a 14 to it. So the second shot is a miss. Yeah. So after uh, the general taunting you and you taunting back, he instantly takes his uh, hand, lifts it up, and the spirit uh, form of Iraq's bow comes in his hand. He shoots you, gets a real good hit in your shoulder, and he instantly fires another shot, and you see it coming. You avoid it with a left turn. And you can just see his anger in his face as he misses you. And then it is Kettle's turn. Yeah, no wait, uh, before Kettle it is your turn. The halflings are at the bottom of the initiative order. So they will also try to uh, break out of their vines. Damn it guys, <laughs> this was horrible. The highest roll was off. Uh, 17, so one of them gets free, the other 14 to 12 and 8, so the others are shit out of luck. But the one free uh, runs away through the rough terrain at uh, the 25 feet of movement, only half, so he doesn't get that far away. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not very far. But he got free! <laughs> yeah, he has a shot of trying. Uh, Kettle, your turn. Alright. Right, right, right. I will. So I'll. Um, yeah. I'll drop the spell and then um, I wave my hands a bit and, uh, and speak some arcane words and uh, I hold them out and sort of take them up and uh, two uh, die wolves appear here. <laughs> And they are uh, large, I think so. Yeah, they are, so they fill four squares. They appear, one of them appears, oh, that's nice. It really fits it well. One of them appears there, the other one appears in those four squares. And then uh, all the vines, they just sort of attract 
down on the ground. So all the vines, they dissipate. They dissipate, yeah. And then uh, uh, I should roll initiative for them as a group. And they roll 15. 15 initiative. And should I just control them? They Because they sort of obey my commands. Yeah, sure, why not? You just do that. That I issue to them and it doesn't take an action for me to issue commands. So I, I just assume that when it's their turn, I say, go get that guy and bite him. And uh, Yeah, exactly. Cool. So um, that's... And after I did that, I would like to spend three bombs of the Summer Court. It's not a spell, so I can do this. That's the, that's the smart thing. Or else I would have used a healing word. And I spend it on uh, Healing Hunter. And that's 3d6. Bombs of the Summer Court is what a, a Dream Druid can do. Sort of these small, uh, transparent yellow butterflies flows from my hand and uh, through the air and engulfs Hunter. It's the bomb. It's the bomb. <laughs> And he gets 10 hit okay. points back. And then you, I, I have, you have a total equal to a level, and you can only use half of your bombs per bone, and it's a bonus action to use them. It's the main part of that uh, it's the main part uh, of subclass. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's, you can heal as your bonus action, um, and it's not a spell. It's sort of an improvised, better healing word. So that's what I do, and um, I step a little bit back. Awesome. So you re uh, retract your vines, you cast two Direvals who appear in the battlefield, and you cast Bombs of the Summer Core to heal Hunter, and take a step back. So at the end of your turn, the sol soldier here standing uh, on your east side, mar while you're doing all these things, Kettle, this all happens in seconds, he takes a blade and cuts the throat of one of the halflings, killing the second one. Right. Then, uh, collateral damage. Yeah, he's, he's dead. No, it's shooting! Yeah, this is hard to get them all. Uh, frustrating. It all happens so fast. So now the two halflings are dead. And then it is your turn, Hunter. Okay, so... Uh, I almost don't have... Where, where is he? Is it there? Is in there? Are there 30 feet in between? Uh, technically, there's technically the 30 feet in between the them. In 30 feet, yeah, within 30 feet. Damage! Yeah, so it's going to be in for the 30 foot. So I have 30 foot right there. Stupid Just get him! Stupid spell, Kill but him. I want to get both of them. Now this. Oh. <laughs> so ridiculous. Stupid spells. Um. Okay, well, I don't know. He's going to kill some halflings. I should probably put him down. In a turmoil of hunter right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I picture it like this. All the chaos around, halflings are dying, arrows flying through the air, cattle is dodging, uh, strikes, uh, casting spells, and hunter uh, evaluates the situation, stops up. Do I really need to save these halflings? <laughs> I really want to kill that guy, but I can't do both. Hmm. <laughs> I can really relate. <laughs> Save the halflings or kill the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, well, technically, I can always kill the bad guy later. So, I'm gonna move my hex to the guy hunting the halflings. And then I'm gonna slowly turn your alignment to good. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> and try and shoot him with sharp. Oh, one. damn! That's a one. Yeah, that misses. I'll try with my second shot. Nice. Twelve. Nope. Damn. Sure. So yeah, you see this soldier running after the halfling and you take a shot at him, you miss, he dodges, you fire a second shot right away, sadly, you also miss your shot. Uh, that's a shit. Yes, the halflings are done for, I'm not gonna start running after him. <laughs> RUN AFTER HIM! <laughs> I just used this dumb spell. Well, uh, that's it for me. Okay, cool. Then it is this soldier who is very surprised suddenly that two dire wolves just reappear right beside him. Uh, just appear out of nothing. Yeah, exactly. You see the shock in his eyes. This other, um, otherwise motionless soldier who keeps their eyes all 
focused on the halflings, gets a shock, but their eyes evade straight away away again, back to the halfling. And he just runs away straight after the halflings, ignoring the wolves. So you get the opportunity attack. Great. They both have pack tactics, so they will get advantage on their attack roll. So, um, first I'll take this one attack. Oh, that's not gonna be good. It's gonna be an 11 to hit. So that's not gonna hit. No man, sorry. And then this one. Come on. This dice tray is not working with me. Turn your clue. 16, does that hit? Yeah, that hits. Okay, nice. And then, uh, then he needs to make a, a strength saving throw as well. After he takes, oh, that's good. Nope. Well, well, two. He got two. Okay. First, he takes um, ten, uh, ten piercing damage. Not magical, so he's resistant to magic to uh, normal damage. He takes half, but it's ten, ten piercing damage. Um, as the wolf just sort of, I say. Uh, Grab him, grab him, lay him down, lay him down! And the dire wolf just snaps at his uh, shoulder and uh, as, a, as a wolf does, or any canine, it just tears him from side to side, yeah, and he, uh, he gets knocked down. Here, after it, uh, it took and shook him. He yeah. took those. Okay, like a picture like this, the cattle casts the spells to summon the dire wolves and uh, this all happens so fast, in a split of seconds, the first direwolf comes, the shock in the eyes of the soldier sees it, he runs away, and then the second direwolf reappears, tries to attack the soldier instantly when it appears, but misses, but the first direwolf that appeared, I know they come almost instantly, we're, we're talking about seconds here, is able to attack the soldier and bite again, and rip him down and knocking him prone, sadly, uh, he is still within range of the halfling, so he's not that far away, but he is prone. Well, he can still attack, but it's at disadvantage if he needs to attack the halfling. Oh, I know. And he needs. And he will. Uh, it's a critical miss. So he tries to stab after the halfling with his dagger, but uh, as he gets up, he is more hurt in his leg than he realizes, and he loses his footing, misses the halfling, and actually drops the dagger out of his hand. Nice. Then it is, uh, this uh, soldier in the back, um, he also goes for this halfling... Did this halfling run? No, I forgot this halfling has his turn also. And they're both prone, so... Uh, Instead of going up and only making half movement, uh, the halfling will make a, take a dodge action. Which is uh, fitted because afterwards it is the soldier standing right behind him. And he will of course make an attack on the halfling with this advantage. Uh, I feel like I just have to clarify one thing, how the soldiers are killing this halfling. Uh, so quickly and only takes an action as long as they hit is because they are very badly hurt they have no life left there's only one HP on each of these halflings so technically only takes an action to kill them or just a hit so yeah but I'll, I'll, I'll roll the disadvantage to see if I hit him if he kills him or not unbelievable a six and an eight this halfling is stubborn and is still alive. What about this halfling? Does he move anymore? Yeah, on his next turn. Okay. Uh, anyway, it is your uh, dire wolf's turn. Okay, great. They would like to uh, move up here. So, 510. Stand in these four squares. This wolf stands awkwardly on top of the road. <laughs> and down, uh, down in the ditch there. And this one. Do the same thing. Move. 5, 10, 15, stand here, and they'll both wail on this guy, um, who's, the, who's lying on the ground. The first one, this one, strikes for nothing, <laughs> for 10, so it's not, it's not gonna hit even with advantage. The next one, ah, it's caught. Yeah, it's a 19. Yeah, 19 hits. Um, so this one hits and gives losing uh, 9 piercing damage. 9 piercing, okay. And that's... it's it just 
he starts to bite into him while he lays on the ground. And that's uh, that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, okay, then it's this soldier here who killed that halfling. He instantly changes his target. It goes for Hunter. He's engaged with one of the wolves. Yeah, he uses an action and disengages and runs over here. So this is, what, 30 feet away from Hunter. So he ends his turn there and then it is the soldier who's on the heels after the halfling and he goes straight for him. The halfling, when he gets beyond this mark, then he has escaped. Uh, So the soldier is trying to stop that. Here. Now he rolls only an 8, so he misses. Oof. Nice. That means that these two halflings are at the edge of getting out, and this is the soldier who's closest to them. And he misses the strike after running, becoming tired. Uh, so the halflings escape. So there are two halflings now who uh, managed to escape. Their next turn. So they're out. Yeah, they're out of initiative. They are safe. Great. Nice. But then it's Leonard Breeden's turn. You see him evaluating the situation, looking around the platform, and he looks at you, Hunter, intensely, uh-huh. and he moves his hand closer, and he like squishes his fists, embracing this new power, and you just see fire coming out of his hands and a great smile on his face. He waves his hand around for a ball of fire. He reaches up, it grows bigger and bigger, then he throws this fireball at you, Hunter. And one thing you notice, when you see the ball of fire coming at you, it looks like a demonic face appears in the flames, that of a demon Patreon. Make a dexterity saving throw. And here is where we're gonna stop this week's episode. We want to find out what happens with Gadal and Hunter at this gate. Well, you have to tune in next week, guys. Remember, if you like this show, leave a comment, give us a like, and tell a friend. Oh yeah, and here's an announcement from BattleBars.com. If you like cool sound effects like this, and that one. Some of this. Then go to our homepage at potbean.nordicdnd.com, click on battlebars.com and let them know Nordic DND sent you.